Uh, are we recording? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we've been recording. <laughs> Yeah, we can start up with small bloopers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Hi, I'm Alexa Barovsky, and I'm uh, happy to be here to speak with Coral Lambert and about her beautiful exhibition, Alternate Worlds. I've known Coral for about 20 years. I believe you can make that count. But, um, wow. Yeah. Um, and last year, I got to uh, work at Alfred, where she teaches sculpture. I guess the main sculptor there, uh, foundry director. Um, so I've learned a lot from her all the years uh, about casting. She's been a mentor to many, many uh, casting sculptors. And uh, so anyway, I'll let Coral introduce herself a little bit. Well, thank you, Alexa. It's wonderful that we can do this together. Um, this exhibition, as Alexa said, is uh, titled Alternate Worlds, and it's really a, a collection of works from the past three years, and they talk about this space between um, twilight and dreams, and, and really talking a little bit about that time uh, during COVID and this idea of parallel universes that kind of, for me, take on a little bit of a different significance uh, when you're living in your own sort of isolated space and somebody else is living in theirs and you're thinking about how these, what would happen if COVID didn't happen or did happen. So this idea of a pandemic was quite interesting. Yeah, definitely with uh, the pandemic, I feel like uh, it changed the way we felt time. Uh, it felt, sometimes it felt like it was very sped up, and other times it felt very slow. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought it was interesting that you're imagining that as an alternate world or as another um, space in time. You know? And I was curious how, how, how you interpret alternate worlds, like you, you touch on it, but I know that it's the idea of parallel universes of parallel like that we're existing possibly in different time frames. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, I mean in fiction, like we also there's like these, these fictional universes. And you do have objects that are kind of space-like. Um, so yes, I mean I've always been interested in things that are bigger than us. Um, the the uh, the cosmos, the, the universe, you know. I talk about Maya being born in first generation stars. Mm -hmm. And um, so there's lots of unknowns that are happening. And, and so I've always been intrigued about that sort of unknown space. Mm -hmm. um, and I think when, when the pandemic happened, everything slowed down. We got to see the solo, the, the, um, the, the super pink moons and the air traffic stopped and everything was quiet and you suddenly thought, wow, there was this, this other alternate world. And, and so the, the idea of alternate worlds works on very different levels. So right. yes, you have the science fiction, the science fiction, but also the scientists that really do believe yes. in Mobius strip <laughs> ideas that yes, there is an alternative universe, but there is a twin at least yeah. a twenty, maybe a hundred. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's also the, 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 the concept of the multi yes. Um, and also, the, you know, I grew up in England and lived there for half of my life and lived half my life in America. So for me, it works on many levels there. Like, oh, right, I think, what, what happened if I did actually stay in England for the, for the last 25 years instead of coming to this alternate kind of road? Right, right. So, yeah, on a on a, a personal level, but also on this sort of out there level, <laughs> right? I think. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a, a, I think that immigrant there's a there's a term that it's a uh, indigenous term from uh, Central America that they refer to as an mm -hmm. and and it's this space in between, like you can't ever reconcile your two homes, and so it's sort of existing in this alternate space. Yeah. And so it makes me think about that. Yeah, and, and actually some of my own sculpture, I was thinking of twins. 
Mm -hmm. so it's, it, it is not something, you know, I'm not a twin, but I often think about a twin, and I think a lot of people have different personalities. Right. You know, so you can, you can channel those personalities. Yeah. So the double for me is, is interesting. Like I've got the, the double pieces there, which are print. There's a, an addition of seven, but I've just chose two to show them side by side to get the side of duality. Right. Um, also with, the, I think with Starry Night, um, I noticed that, well, you mentioned that uh, the, the casting. So maybe, maybe you can tell us a little bit about casting itself so it's not everyone's familiar with the process, but when you're taking something, something from a, a material that's solid, and transforming it to liquid and then back to solid yeah. and that transformative uh, aspect of it. And, and with the starry night, I, I used uh, starfish, which are of the same dimension, and then translated them into stars that we, are, we tend to associate with the yeah. star. So, yeah. so that, that's so, a um, There's a duality. So it, that what is below is above. Um, and that's an organic time associated with melting or transmuting or transforming materials. So you bring the material down to its base elements and then it can um, have a soul. The soul moves along then the real thing that is there. But with furnaces, um, what, I, what I wanted to do with Starry Starry Night was kind of channel that idea of um, speeding up the work of nature. So I created a, a, an opportunity to make stars. Um, I call it the star factory. We put the <laughs> furnace in the in the hillside um, on the side by the hill, and then as the sun came up, we cast um, a, a multitude of uh, stars, which you can see in the background here, um, and then we planted them on the top of the hill. So as the sun came up, they extinguished the stars. It, it seemed like they were extinguishing the stars because they were um, red hot and they lost their Right, but it also extinguished the real stars in the sky. Right, yeah. So, so the process, while the metal's hot, it's bright red and you're seeing it almost like a glowing star. And then yes. it cools, yeah. it goes dark. Yeah, it's, it, somebody asked me an interesting question. How did you get the stars to glow? <laughs> right. <laughs> and, uh, because in the, in the imagery, you just see a picture of these red hot stars, and people think, oh, is that Photoshop? Yeah. Or is that, uh, has it got a light in it? But no, the molten metal, the, the metal is melted up to a temperature of 2,700 degrees Fahrenheit, and then it's poured into a mold. And then as it, cool, as it solidifies, it's still glowing red hot. So as it solidifies, then you can actually move it around. Right. Um, but it's still probably about 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Right. You don't want to touch it. We've got it on a long pole. Yes. <laughs> so you can carry them. But in the, 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 the dawn, which is when we did it, 5 o'clock in the morning, um, it started off pretty dark. So you, you don't see the bottom, you just see the star in the sky. Right. So it yeah. was a really yeah. magical moment. Yeah. It, it took a specific type of person to get up at 5 and come watch it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. yeah, and this was before COVID. Yeah. Um, but that the star at night became the anchor for the show. Mm -hmm. And then I put the other planet, you know, pieces like this, the planetary pieces around. Yeah. But you're um, talking about the process of and, and the team in terms of, to make Starry Night. I, I was interested in um, how uh, a lot of your sculpture and the casting requires teams and it's very mm -hmm. community oriented and collaborative and performative, right? You're performing the act. And yeah. So I was wondering how you see the performative, uh, the difference between that performative uh, experience versus the exhibition in the gallery and how do you try to bring some of those performative aspects to the gallery mm -hmm. and how? Yeah. Uh, you know, because it's obviously limited and the, the experience has been translated into digital video or into photographs, uh, so it's, it's been transformed. Yeah, it's, it's basically figuring out how to curate that um, because I don't want it to, it's never going to be the same as the real performance. The performance 
including the dampness in the air and the wind and the sound of the birds and the sound of the furnace and the, the, the grass and like, the smells and everything. So you're not going to be hungry to get that. So you, it's really showing the artifacts of them. And, and what I wanted to do with these artifacts was give them another purpose in a way. So I wanted to make them accessible, but also what they're doing now in this gallery, they are uh, a remnant or an artifact of the stars, and they've got shadows, and they've got video, and kind of fashion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Yeah. Because this is a performance, right? Yeah. yeah. So this is the performance. Yeah. It's like, what's it? so, yeah, yeah. And you can see the star. I do think you retain some of the performance because you have the structure. Yeah. Is this the same? It's the same structure, yeah. Yeah. So I do think uh, it's a copy of the same, of the original. Yeah, like, so I, I, that insinuates, like, it's almost like there's an invitation, of, and at least there's a suggestion that you can lift that up. Um, and yes. It's just the scale, it's a medium scale. They, they, um, they do maintain the personality yeah and they maintain the function mm -hmm. um, so yeah you, you can get the idea and, and figure out all the ways that the jigsaw comes about what happened but mm -hmm. well, what I'm doing with these is they are raising money for the social justice uh, billboard project in uh, George Floyd Square which is headquartered here at North East Sculpture Factory so these um, have now got a new purpose and they're, 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 like, they're going off into all these individual people's gardens, which is kind of fun. <laughs> it's like, oh, should you really do that with my art? And it's like, <laughs> I like people to, I like them to have life after. Yeah, it's a little bit. Like, yeah, or, or the sponge just go somewhere. Not just back at the studio, but if they don't go anywhere, they are taken back up to the hill. Yeah, um, and I'll put them back up the hill at um, Salem Artworks, which is where we passed it, and they will they become an outdoor observatory. Okay. And almost like a story that people say, oh, were you there the morning that these stars were glowing and did you see it? And, um, but it, at that site, you can still watch the sun come up. And, and, and so how many are there? There's probably about 80 up there, okay. right now. Oh. and then there's about 22 here. And the stars also maintain the scars um, of the process. So you can see if the metal was cool, or you can see where the, the air gas levels were cool. Yeah. So they're almost like little cosmos themselves. Right. And there's also an individuality to each one.